why they are n uh, never move to to the towns or villages here why they they keep themselves in that kind of style as you know if you go around the world and the indigenous people have their own cosmology yeah the cosmology says how they should live their own way of life mm -hmm. which is different from the way of life ours of ours therefore they believe in the traditional cosmology of their ancestry they never like to come out they say the forest belongs to them the city belongs to us there is a distinction and number two their ancestors will get angry if they try to settle down in a place and practice agriculture number third they never like to send their kids to the school because they are the nomadic and the fourth they want to cut down the trees make wooden utensils mm -hmm. go to the people for actions with the grain so that they can they can keep on their life mm -hmm. and these are some rights of what i call in my book router rights not human rights router rights mm -hmm. there's five router rights very useful for this mm -hmm. so so this this is the <coughs> principle and if you <coughs> try to talk to these people and try to make some sort of the committee to look after these people surely you can bring them to the settlement but not within one year within six months within four or five years but maybe if you work for a long time such practices have been carried out by un unicef in mm -hmm. many parts of the world especially in africa Mm -hmm. They have set up mobile camp. Mm -hmm. They have set up mobile education schools. You know, schools. They have set up mobile markets for providing some goods. If you do this kind of thing, what I mean, the movement of the nomadic group from one part of the jungle to another will reduce, and slowly they will, uh, you know, they will try to settle more at a place. And then after a few years, they will agree to settle at a time. Yeah. So these are some psychological treatment. Otherwise, if you just go with some police or army or sit down at this place, this is the decision of government. You can't do this in the indigenous people. So, if you go into different ethnic groups in Nepal, uh, only one group is a nomadic one. What we call is the Raute. I have already started working on that. It has been almost uh, two decades that I have been working on that one. I have already published books, articles nationally, internationally. Even I brought these people to the parliament of Nepal. Then I I I I gave a lecture to the parliament and I I. I I convinced the parliamentarian uh, to pass some of the basic rules about the route. We passed the two rules, and then now there is a lot of benefits is gi being given by the government to the routes. But there are so many NGO now that they are so working on the and, uh, on the routes welfare. That's I'm happy. But I never tried to set up any NGOs and try to make money and then go to 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 exploit routes. But what I tried is I want to invite international national community. To look after that, and then they will benefit it. And I, my policy is, I want to make one single basket policy, so all the helpers or cooperate uh, cooperation societies, if they want to help, to extend their help to the route, they should go through this one basket policy, so that the benefits of the route will be, you know, upheld. So that will be much better. I mean, any people like you, if you come, you are most welcome. You can go, and I, I I suggest people to make. You are a filmmaker, you know, you can make a film on the route. You can yeah. you can and produce it is a fantastic you know yeah. for that I have been working for the last twenty years you know then I can help a lot you know then you can produce it it will earn a lot of money in internet it will make you both money and fame then a part of that if you invest on the benefit of the routey that will be much better that this is what we say a collective benefit mutual benefit principles of United Nations yeah. we call is the International Declaration of the UN. That says, if you want to work on the indigenous people in the world, the the, the benefit you derive from, uh, have to use it equally for the benefit of both the sectors, both the stakeholders. So if you do this kind of thing, I think it will be very much useful. And there are few people who are nobody in the world. Few yeah. from Asia, few from African continent, few from Amazon Amazon area of Latin America, a lot of few people are there. So in Nepal is only one of 126, and it is still in the jungle. It's fantastic. The pros are, if you really fix a certain area where mm. they move around, and then uh, cultivate some things they eat, for example, yam and something like that, wild yams, and if you make it very much beautiful tourist destination area, mm. you can attract a lot of populations, scientific, educational, and some people, so that you can make a lot of earnings. Mm -hmm. But you cannot make human as a zoo. That's not like that. If you go to the northern part of Thailand, if you go to other part, there is also no Madaguru. 
but they are not settled at one. They are gi given a very big space. If you go to Australia, the Aboriginal of Australia are again demanding in the court to go back to their normalcy, to their indi uh, indigenous life. They like to hunt animals. They want to use their indigenous technique. They don't like this modern life anymore. So if they have a right to ask for that, they will have it in their future. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. same thing may happen in the, in the future in the case of Raute. For that, if you take into consideration, it is right one way. But on the other way, what is happening, in the 21st century, everybody, you know, the, we have to protect their culture. We have to document their culture. We have to document their nomadic life so that our future generation will, you know, watch it or see it. Uh, otherwise, it will vanish forever. Mm -hmm. this, the, if culture is vanished, it will be vanished forever. It is irreversible loss, you know. It is irreversible loss. It will never come back. Culture, if once it is lost, it will be lost forever. Yes. That's why what I am planning is we can set up some document, you know, mm. documentary centers. We can record everything of the routes and we can slowly uh, bring them to the new way of life with the education, everything, but should not bring it completely to Kathmandu or this big city so that they will lose all their, you know, this, this tradition. Yeah. So uh, this is the what I am thinking. Yeah. We, we, we don't like to make them like animals, but yeah. we like to make uh, a little bit change in their life. But the life should be at least a new excitement to the new generation.